This is section 82 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Lotus Club Dinner in Honor of Mark Twain by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the first formal dinner in the new clubhouse, November 11, 1893. In introducing the guest of the evening, Mr. Lawrence said, Tonight the old faces appear once more amid new surroundings. The place where last we met about the table has vanished, and tonight we have our first lotus dinner in a home that is all our own. It is peculiarly fitting that the board should now be spread in honor of one who has been a member of the club for full a score of years, and it is a happy augury for the future that our fellow member whom we assemble to greet should be the bearer of a most distinguished name in the world of letters, for the Lotus Club is ever at its best when paying homage to genius in literature or in art. Is there a civilized being who has not heard the name of Mark Twain? We knew him long years ago, before he came out of the boundless West, brimful of wit and eloquence, with no reverence for anything, and went abroad to educate the untutored European in the subtleties of the American joke. The world has looked on and applauded while he has broken many images. He has led us in imagination all over the globe. With him as our guide, we have traversed alike the Mississippi and the Sea of Galilee. At his bidding, we have laughed at a thousand absurdities. By a laborious process of reasoning, he has convinced us that the Egyptian mummies are actually dead. He has held us spellbound upon the plain at the foot of the great Sphinx, and we have joined him in weeping bitter tears at the tomb of Adam. Tonight we greet him in the flesh. What name is there in literature that can be likened to his? Perhaps some of the distinguished gentlemen about this table can tell us, but I know of none. Himself his only parallel. Mr. President, gentlemen, and fellow members of the Lotus Club, I have seldom in my lifetime listened to compliments so felicitously phrased or so well deserved. I return thanks for them from a full heart and an appreciative spirit, and I will say this in self-defense. While I am charged with having no reverence for anything— I wish to say that I have reverence for the man who can utter such truths, and I also have a deep reverence and a sincere one for a club that can do such justice to me. To be the chief guest of such a club is something to be envied, and if I read your countenances rightly, I am envied. I am glad to see this club in such palatial quarters." I remember it twenty years ago when it was housed in a stable. Now, when I was studying for the ministry, there were two or three things that struck my attention particularly. At the first banquet mentioned in history that other prodigal son who came back from his travels was invited to stand up and have his say. They were all there, his brethren, David and Goliath, and, uh, and if he had had such experience as I have had, he would have waited until those other people got through talking. He got up and testified to all his failings. Now, if he had waited before telling all about his riotous living until the others had spoken, he might not have given himself away as he did. And I think that I would give myself away if I should go on. I think I'd better wait until the others hand in their testimony. Then, if it is necessary for me to make an explanation, 
i will get up and explain and if i cannot do that i'll deny it happened later in the evening mr clemens made another speech replying to a fire of short speeches by charles dudley warner charles a dana seth lowe general porter and many others each welcoming the guest of honor i don't see that i have a great deal to explain i got off very well considering the opportunities that these other fellows had i don't see that mr lowe said anything against me and neither did mr dana however i will say that i never heard so many lies told in one evening as were told by mr mckelway and i consider myself very capable but even in his case when he got through i was gratified by finding how much he hadn't found out by accident he missed the very things that i didn't want to have said and now gentlemen about americanism i have been on the continent of europe for two and a half years i have met many americans there some sojourning for a short time only others making protracted stays and it has been very gratifying to me to find that nearly all preserved their americanism i have found they all like to see the flag fly and that their hearts rise when they see the stars and stripes i met only one lady who had forgotten the land of her birth and glorified monarchical institutions i think it is a great thing to say that in two and a half years i met only one person who had fallen a victim to the shams i think we may call them shams of nobilities and of heredities she was entirely lost in them after i had listened to her for a long time i said to her at least you must admit that we have one merit we are not like the chinese who refuse to allow their citizens who are tired of the country to leave it thank god we don't end of lotus club dinner in honor of mark twain by mark twain read by john greenman